Good afternoon, everyone who's joined us. We're just going to give people a minute or two um, to get situated, grab a cup of coffee, get their lunches in front of them, um, and then we'll get started. This is the weekly CAMA plan webinar. And I'll uh, introduce the topic and the speaker in just a moment. I think we're at 12.02, so I think we can get started. Um, we'll ask you to submit questions in the uh, chat function or in the Q&A function that you see on your screen throughout. Uh, we may interrupt if the question is pertinent to what uh, Brandon is covering at the moment, but um, we'll, we'll often save them up till the end and let him present. So uh, before we get started, this is a weekly webinar, this series produced by Cama Plan. Today, we're going to cover putting physical gold to work. Um, we've got Brandon Green of Neptune Global, who is going to um, start out by covering some of the, the, the case for gold that many of us have heard, but some of us have, have not. And along the way, he's going to point out some surprising things about the behavior of gold and the market behavior that sets the stage for a discussion of how people can make money on physical gold uh, beyond just holding it and hoping that someday they can sell it for more than they paid for it. So um, before we go, we have a little heretofore and, uh, and, and notwithstanding type language to cover. Um, the views expressed here are those of the speakers, and they may not reflect those of CAMA. It, and CAMA doesn't guarantee any accuracy of information provided by the speakers. Um, professional advisors should be co uh, consulted. We tell people this all the time before implementing any options presented. We can't endorse or recommend uh, any individual organization, including the speakers. Um, we can't accept any liability for losses and damage arising or emission from errors or omissions within reliance upon or any use of the information provided by the speakers. As always, we say consult your CPA, your realtor, your attorney, um, your tax preparation specialist, a tax advisor uh, before you do anything in this. So without further ado, now that that's gone, I'm going to drop off the screen share here and I'm going to introduce Brandon Green, who has come to us from Neptune Global. Brandon, go ahead and share your screen. Okay, sounds good. Brandon divides his time between Toronto and where in Mexico? Where do you have <laughs> Just south of Cancun. I have a place just south of Plato, yeah. Carmen. This is, yeah. Life, this is the life <laughs> of a major, you know, gold trader. Uh, you know, he's, <laughs> in the summertime, he's up here. In the wintertime, he's down there. So, um, how does that look? And uh, let me see that. There we go. I think we're good to go. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, welcome. I'm happy happy to be here and working. Uh, you know, Neptune's been working with Camera Plan for many many years now in the uh, in the retirement space, um, helping clients put physical metals in to their IRA. Um, so um, without further ado, I'm just going to step right into it. We're going to talk about the gold market, talk about, um, you know, where, how the prices, where the prices is, is, is came from, where it's going, but the demand get into a little bit about where, how we can, there's ways you can create income from it. Some other ways to invest in gold and, and other precious metals and a little bit about the company at the end. So here we go. So let's, I just want to start out with a quote. And, you know, this is a, this is a very important quote that JP Morgan said before Congress in 1912, which gold is money and nothing else. All other assets in the banking system, including dollar bills are forms of credit whose value depends on the debtor paying it back. Gold is the only financial asset that bears zero counterparty risk. And that still holds true today. Um, you know, if you're holding it, in some sort of direct form, of course, there's no counterparty risk, um, but it has surpassed um, all forms of currency. And that is very much true. And we you know JP Morgan, the company is still around in, in a very big player in the financial markets. So one thing, that what we're gonna talk about is, you know, about putting physical gold to work. And this came about because one of the only common complaints we get 
for investing in gold is it doesn't provide income. That's that's a big one we've heard. And so there's one thing that that companies are trying to do in, in forms of ways is to create products and create solutions to, to these problems or complaints that people have. So we're going to talk about that a little later, about how we found a creative solution uh, to this need. So why gold? Why fit? Why precious metals? Well, undisputed form of wealth for the past over 5,000 years. Like I said earlier, it's gone. It's it's made its way and survived through several different types of currencies, uh, all different forms of, of payment. And it's still today uh, uh, a very strong demand investment form of money, form of uh, wealth preservation. Oh, yeah, like I said, it's outlived every paper currency ever created. There's no counterparty risk, and that's important. You know, So you hold it directly. You don't hold it in a paper form, a paper promise of, of any sort. It, there is no counterparty risk. You own it. You have it in your hand. You can sell it for whatever currency in the future. Or So you nobody's any bankruptcy by any other company that might be holding your asset or money or whatever it might be. It does not. You have no counterparty risk. It's liquid, portable, divisible, lots of very important characteristics and a store of wealth. Universally accepted. You can go anywhere in the world and you can sell your gold or you can buy gold anywhere in the world with the second second largest trading volume to the S&P. Um, and almost every central bank in the world holds physical gold. And you should too. Uh, the only one I can think of right now is Canada that they sold all their gold off a few years ago. <laughs> Um, but I'm sure they'll probably buy it back sometime in the future. Okay, let's look at the total physical gold market and how it breaks down. Jewelry, not a surprise, is at 46% of the market approximately. It's big. We have India every year. That we have, you know, I mean, every you can just walk down any street and you have jewelry stores that selling gold, whether it's 24 karat or, or gold plated. It's a large part of the market. Next is the the business and investment business that Neptune is primarily in. It's about bars and coins represent about twenty one percent, which is which is pretty good. So we're about six we're about uh, sixty seven right now. Then it's central banks, which we discussed this in the last slide. They are holding about seventeen percent, but they are buying a lot and they know what they're doing. So they're coming up a little bit more. Um, next, and this is very surprising to a lot of people, is that the physical ETFs only are about 2% of the whole gold market. Um, you know, still 0.2 trillion and, you know, 3,400 3, tons, but um, they only hold about 2%. And we're actually going to see about, a little bit about uh, what's been happening with them in a later slide. The remainder is primarily, you know, industrial, financial institutions. And um, a quick note. Just the other, just a few days ago, we were. I was reading that the AI is so strong, and the chips needed, and the power needed, that the gold is being more so considered and used for the conductors. Um, primarily, it's silver because it's cheaper, and it and it does the job for the amount of for the for the value and the cost that to put in the mechanics of your computer you're using or the phone you're using. Um, but gold is a better connect conductor. And this is uh, something that AI is kind of having a little bit of a, it, it, AI is big right now. Everybody's, it's, everybody, it's the big buzz. Well, you know, it's kind of pushing uh, towards use of gold a little bit more. I don't know if it's going to make a big dent. You know, there's not, there's, there's only a couple bucks of metal, of uh, precious metals in each computer, but we'll see. I want to talk a little bit about the major asset class major asset class breakdowns about where gold is compared to the other major markets. And this is quite a eye-opening chart. So 266 trillion in global financial assets, only 1% is gold. We have debt and equities taking up, you know, 90%, even this is 89%, alternative five and gold, just 1%. If just a fraction of people want to sell their debt and equities and move into gold. I, I couldn't even imagine where the price would be. Um, there's a lot of different factors that can do that. There's a lot of different 
um, ways that the gold market can handle it and not handle it. But it, it's something that should be noted is that the it is relatively small in a way in the global scale, but we, we can see something move if we do have a shift. And speaking of this, of the the trading and the investing, the notional value is pretty high. It's a highly traded asset, even though it's 1%. There's a lot of daily notional value traded, about 160 some odd billion, um, second to the S&P, to the U.S. Treasury bills and, and U.S. corporates and the Dow Jones. It's there's it's a it's a big traded market. So some some surprising facts there to a lot of people. So we have heard before that gold is, you know, it protects you in, in market turmoil or whatever it may be. Um, it, it protects you in against uh, counterparty risk of your other assets. Let's take a look how it has done during the crisis. Okay. Here's about seven of the major um, crises. We can see here that gold has done one. Uh, five of them, it's done the best. Five of these, five out of the seven. And even of the other two, it didn't do the worst. So it has a very strong history in protection in crises. So dot com, some some more recent ones, um, you know, Brexit and COVID nineteen, the twenty twenty two pullback, lots of different lots of different aspects. There's I got this from the World Bank. You can keep going and going, but I wanted to give something that really showed at least. Uh, gave a view of some more recent and back in the Great Recession too. But what about after the crisis? <laughs> right, we got to know how it does after the crisis. So here's a here's a chart that I received from the World Gold Council where they show that some some of the same ones they have some different different um, uh, crisis in past crises in here. But you can see with COVID after COVID post Brexit dot com. 167. There's a lot of of different uh, sections in history that just post crisis gold did very well, um, especially when people this they I believe they used U.S. U.S. Treasuries because that's what often people are are playing it safe, right? What's the safer bet, right? Are you going to go in the gold or Treasuries? You know, it's your flight to safety. Obviously, gold is better. It's the proof is right there. So we. We touched on central banks uh, a little bit in some previous slides and how they accounted for a certain percentage of the market. Well, let's look at how their purchasing is has gone in the past, in the recent history. So I'm going to get my pointer out here so we can make it a little easier. So the gold line is the gold price, and the green line, it, the green bars, are the purchases and sales of or net purchases or net sales. Of central banks. So up until the 2008, 2000, 2008 crisis, 2009, they were net sellers um, quite a bit. Now, the price was moving up. So somebody was buying. So there could have been, there could have been, it could have been a shortage of, of the actual product coming out of the ground. Um, there could have been in, uh, investment demand in, in, in funds, in physical, there are a lot of different factors, but they were sellers. But they switched hard to net purchasing <laughs> in 2009 and have continued ever since. And there is no signs of slowing down. None of them have made statements that they're going to be pulling back. Um, they have been net, net purchasers throughout uh, since 2009. And the gold price has seen quite a bit. It's steadily up. Um, and fortunately, I didn't get one for, for last year, but it, the proof is there now. Let's take a peek at a specific central bank. We often, if, if you do follow the market a little bit, you will hear about the bank, People's Bank of China and their purchases. Well, let's take a look at what's been happening in the past, past nine years. So the black line is the gold price. The gold line is the purchases. Well, in 2022, they really, really ramped it up. Right, purchasing 250 tons, right metric tons. This is per quarter, and just this past quarter, we got to just the um, first quarter of this year, we have just sub 200. So they are not stopping. They see what's going on. 
they are going you know, to continue to purchase and uh, they've they've I believe they've made it public that they're not going to stop with that. So um, whether it's all central banks or the People's Bank of China, they they are buying gold. They are buying gold. And, and this is a definitely a factor into the move that we've seen lately. So I mentioned the GLD or I mentioned ETFs. It's a small part of the market. And, and we want to kind of take a look at what's been happening with this. This is a very popular ETF. And many individuals, many institutions purchase it, um, many institutions per and people short it. Um, but let's take a look at what's happening with the holdings. OK, so again, I'm going to talk about the price first. This blue line is the share price. This is essentially the gold price. The share price is about one tenth of the actual gold price, give or take. Now, this is a freely traded instrument. It could trade wherever it wants, even based on wherever the gold price is. So if people believe that it's that, that people could put in demand or they can sell it and it could be very much underneath um, its actual um, value of holdings. But that's essentially following the gold price. The black line is the amount of gold it holds. The amount of gold that's backing every single share in the vault and about mid to late 2021 it has been in steady decline of holdings right this is not going to affect its share price specifically because one the amount of gold back per share is always going to match and people are going to pay for what that share is worth like you pay for what you believe a company is net value at that time and it's going to trade but the the gold has been coming out and in order for you to get gold out of this you have to be an authorized participant. That means you have to be a very large institution to take the gold out. So very large institutions are removing the gold. So where is it going? Well, maybe they're selling it to clients. Maybe they're holding it. Either way, big institutions are taking it and they're they're depleting it pretty quickly. Um, I just see this as a positive for gold. We, it means that more people are looking for physical rather than the, tr the tradable um, financial instrument. So, and sometimes you might hear that there's questionable holdings with the prospectus and that's fine. There's there, the prospectus, you know, you can't, you're basically just says you can't, they may or may not have it and you can't get it. But if you're a big institution, you've been pulling it out and they've been getting it. So uh, it's very interesting slide going. It's, I mean, what are we now? We're at uh, 140 up from, no, no, sorry. But yeah, 838 tons back from 1280. It was about. So yeah, it's quite a quite a decline. So we'll see where this ends up. It's gonna go up and down. We'll see this where this ends up in a in a couple of years. So I I'll be following it and hopefully you will too. So gold does move in cycles. I mean, there's fundamentals or technicals and and all this is cycles. Uh one thing you might have heard is that $5,000 gold, who knows when it's going to get there, but there are some ways to get to that number. So this is from our friends at MKS PAMP that we, you know, we, we work with for, they have you know, fantastic gold bars and then they're in their an LBMA refiner. They put out this study and they're talking about gold cycles. So you can see here, 70, 79, this is going to be about 1980 right here when the first gold cycle. Then we had a second one that ended in about 2011. And they believe we're in a strong third gold cycle. And if you do your charts, you do your technicals, your regression analysis, all the different stuff that these professionals do, they believe it's going to get there. And, you know, it could be 2029. It could be it could be earlier. It could be later. But there's a strong notion that, you know, there's that if you're looking at cycles and how they work, you know, we could get there in the next five years. So and that's quite a move, right? That's that's over. That's double. So 100 percent move. OK, so we've been looking at a lot of the end game, right? The physical market the in, in the the tradable instruments, the investment market. But. What about the where it all starts? 
were the the miners, the gold producers. It's very important to look at what are they doing, right? So when you look at the futures market, the futures market was created for companies like gold producers to pre-sell their inventory. They don't want to deal with the price fluctuations. They don't want to know when they get out of the ground in a year, their estimated 100,000 ounces of gold. They want to know what it's going to be. They want to, they want to know what they're going to sell it for. And somebody else can take on that risk because they, they just, they need to know, they need to budget and get out of the ground. Well, let's see what they're doing. So the blue line again is the gold price. The red dotted line is the amount, the, the net position of how much in the future these producers have sold. What this is showing in the current is that they're not pre-selling their inventory in the future. They're only pre-selling about five to 10% of it. So they are taking their either, they believe that the price at least will not be lower, <laughs> at least will not be lower than what it is right now. So they're willing to take this chance, take this bet, risk, and these people know what they're doing. These CEOs and direct board of directors and geologists, they of these large gold producers that can go out and, and, and hedge on this market, they understand what's happening. So they're not producing. They're sorry, they're not hedging their production. So this is uh, this is also a strong uh, fact to look at. It, it doesn't lie. So they believe that it's they they just aren't pre-selling their inventory. So they're willing to risk it at least for what the current price is or higher. And you may want to speculate, or at least you want safety. You just know they they just believe gold's at least not going. It's not going down. So anything can happen. But these people are are there. It, it shows what they're up to. So uh, this is a very one of my favorite uh, charts right now. Okay, so we went a little bit over all of the, uh, the the current gold market, what's happening, where the price is going, who's buying, what's happening, all that stuff. Let's talk about types of precious metals um, investing out there, okay? So you want to, some of the things you want to look for when you're doing it, you want to see if it is it liquid, is it direct, does it even have income types of investing, is it deliverable? Some of you may buy coins and bars and you bring them home semi-liquid you already have it so it's direct no income and you've already got the deliver it's already delivered to you so those those factors are, are good so no income fair enough but you might want to store it especially if you have a certain if you have a hefty amount still that's much more liquid um if, if you have it in storage direct depends on the type of account you have but you should be if you have a segregated and allocated account in your name that would be considered direct. You hold it. Won't provide income. Is it deliverable? Well, if you do have, if you do have a series of, you, it's always deliverable. Um, any any vaulting should always be deliverable. Your ETFs. We talked about the GLD and its holdings. Very liquid product, of course. Um, you can sell it on your any of your trading accounts. Definitely not direct. There is your broker, a custodian, a manager, all in between. No income. And the deliverable fact the deliverable factor is definitely a maybe. Uh, some of them claim that you know you and I can get it out, but you still need to have a million dollars in some cases. So deliverable, theoretically, yes. Um we have some vault accounts here that uh, I believe should be a part of this slide. We have direct, you can purchase uh, gold and silver in a tradable form with a direct allocation in the vault that's um, patented. And it gives you this liquid direct investment and it's in the with live pricing and it's very public. Um, won't give you income, um, but it's deliverable. Um, it's completely deliverable with a phone call. And finally, which we're going to talk about for income is gold with options, right? Op the options market. You may or not be familiar with options, but we're going to talk about them a little bit. It is liquid. Uh, you can get it. You, you can do it with a direct holding. Um, income is obviously available when you're selling the options and it's deliverable. So ways to generate income from gold and precious metals. We're just going to look at 
generally all the different types of ways. And it doesn't mean it's actually part of investment. It could be in business in different ways you can do it. And the, any any sort of uh, aspect of, of the metals market, right? So there's jewelry, right? You can go out there, you can buy metals, you can buy grain, you can take it to a melter, you can buy it, you can sell it, you can open an Etsy account, you can do all this stuff and create income for yourself. And have and you always have the gold. So you're always investing in the gold and you'll always have it and you can do what you want with that. And you can make it into jewelry. And you know you 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 got a, an investment and uh, a business. You can lease it out. This is actually pretty common. And people do lease it to jewelers to make to make the gold and the jewelers give it back. You could also lend out your shares on these major institutions will lend those that GLD to other people at an income. This all happens. I just want to point out some of these ways that uh, are, are made that you can generate income. Um, next is you can trade it. If you're good at buying low, selling high, which I don't believe anybody out there really is, no matter how in tune you are with the market, that's great. You can create an income from it. Or you can act like a market maker. just Or like the, take your pawn shop. You can buy the gold and resell it right that's fine you can just you can have a lower bid and you can make an income from that no problem if you want to have your brick and mortar store or you have your trading account and you believe you can you can call those bottoms and tops or you can sell options against your physical or investment instrument so what are some current off like solutions for options on gold out there that this is done a little bit um but it depends on your 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 net worth and and your know-how and and so forth from there so etfs there are a couple etfs that do this some in the united states one or two and one or two in canada actually where they do have this options on gold selling there's plenty of etfs that do options on this s p 500 where they Sell these at the money. None of these really prove to be better than the general market that they're the underlying. Whether it's a gold, silver, S and P five hundred, Dow Jones, bonds, whatever it might be. Most of these are robotic, where they just say we're selling a certain percentage of, of at a over the price or at the money. Um, and I'm not going to get into the specifics of options and how they're and how they're priced. And they're, we're going to talk about just the characteristics, but they're robotic, they're algorithmic. They just have a set place, and they just don't they don't don't really work. It's more about being opportunistic, which we're going to talk about. Um, and if you can get them, get the gold out of there, or silver, or whatever it might be, that's questionable too. There are plenty of newsletters out there that you know that will claim that they know how to sell options or what options to buy yeah, whether it's for gold regular market um i'm not sure they they'll they'll always give you their best history they'll pick us a, a zone uh probably a waste of money but they're out there this i've seen before i've i've known a few people that have done this separately managed accounts at your brokerage you can have an account with some of the big major larger firms um just name them like maybe JP Morgan or like we said in the beginning or Merrill Lynch and so forth. And your broker can sell these options against your gold or your S&P 500 or whatever it might be. That's on an individual basis, quite expensive. And you have to have a certain, uh, they'll only take accounts of a certain size, um, but it, it is done. It is done. Um, but, it, you know, for, for, I think people like uh, yourselves and, and, and me, it wouldn't be, um, something to utilize and you're going to find private investments out there you know private funds and available for you know accredited individuals that do this kind of stuff um, in various various places so let's talk about options and what they are like i said i'm not going to go into how options are the, the specific pricing and different things I'm just going to talk about the characteristics of what they provide and we can talk one-on-one -on -one and directly about how, how these things are done at any time post. Um, I just want to talk about how really essentially, so you can get an understanding on how they're done. If you haven't, if you don't know the market that well, they, they, 
Options are options to call away or put in your hand the stock or bond or gold that you have. So they have premiums. People will pay those premiums like insurance, right? Like insurance sells, 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 um, sells policies, you know, they, and you buy them. And if you're, you know, like term life or travel, you're going, you're going away for a little bit or term life, you know, it's for a specific period of time. And if you need to use it, it pays out. If you don't, the insurance company keeps the premium. You can do this on gold. And, and it's a, it's a very giant market of all types of market products, but you can do this on gold. So the premium is paid and then the company is pays out if obligations in the contract are, are, are met or needed. So in our, in, for example, in the gold price, if it hits a certain price, you can, the person who bought it can act on it. But if it doesn't, the person selling the options gets to keep the premium. The risk is, 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 is taken away. So you can get these premiums on your goal. Okay. Some of the benefits you can get from this is slashing volatility for limited upside. So when you're, you're basically giving, giving away some upside, you're get people can call away your product for the premium that they've paid, which is a little bit. And, and, and you keep the, you keep those premiums and you, so you might limit your upside, but if you don't get there every time you will get this income, you keep getting this income until, until you might have to um, buy that option back. We don't, like I said, we're not going to get into the deep trading, but you can absolutely get some income for a little bit of limited upside. And it can, in the, in the end, you could be up in your account. Uh, much more than what you would have if you just own gold all outright. But you got to know what you're doing. So, like I said, if gold hasn't reached that set price, you keep the premium. If it hits that price, you might have to buy that back at a little bit more expensive, but the gold appreciation has happened. And as a holder of the metal, you can actually purchase downside protection if you want. And that's what we do in some of our strategies. We're just, we're, we're playing both sides uh, strategically um, in finding these correct parts of the market to sell and buy options. So strategic selling and buying absolutely can provide these winners of income. But what's important is it's not robotic. You can't just do what some of these ETFs that I've mentioned is just sell them no matter not looking at the market, not thinking about where things are going, never a winner. It, it never works. The, 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 the market itself knows this, the premiums know this. That's why the, the way they're traded and set. So you have to be creative and, and take a look at a lot more than just that because we can't pick tops and bottoms. Still, I will say it, it's I've never met anybody who's really, really good at picking tops and bonds. And they say they are and they put out a newsletter, they're 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 not because they wouldn't they wouldn't tell anybody, right? You just <laughs> if your strategy really worked, you wouldn't tell anybody. So it, it, otherwise you wouldn't have to make money <laughs> by selling it. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes that makes me uh chuckle because after after a while you start to really understand. So I'm gonna talk about our thought process on on these strategies and how we're finding these these areas and what to sell, where to sell, where to buy. So you always got to look at the baseline demand and volatility of the asset, right? The demand of gold, what's happening right now, where is it going to go? What's demand of any asset and what's the volatility? Like what has been the volatility and, and what is potential coming, right? So gold's average volatility is in and around 15%, right? um for all of history right so you need to understand how this how the change in this volatility may affect the price in 30 to 365 days because you can sell these con these uh, option contracts to to expire in various parts throughout the year right so if you if you un if you can find parts throughout the year that you know gold may not go above or below you can sell a contract for that, that time, that expiry date and that price. Um, so you need to find your ideal entry points and you're looking at the premiums as well because the pre the actual premium that's traded for the point you're looking at might not be enough to bring in and you have to look at different areas. 
there's a lot to look at, and this is why you don't want to be robotic. You need to evaluate both technical and fundamental. Lots of people look at charts, you know, the, you, you got candlesticks, you got, you know, the Fibonacci's, you got all these different uh, RSI's, um, moving averages. You got to look at those technicals, yes, but then fundamentals, quite frankly, just will overtake those at any point in time, right? If, if you think about, think about, you know, if you have the corn trading and then there's a immediate, it, you know, it's, it's, it's you know what it's high it's high it's it's probably going to come down and then a bad storm happens and wipes it all out you know it's like fundamental right that's so there's naturally that's a that's a supply issue compared to demand so we need to look at a lot of these different factors so we look at annual gold demand which we covered in an earlier slide and we'll look at how when when is the annual gold demand gonna gonna take place right is it is it higher or lower at certain times of the year and work that with technical right so you find the trend and one thing we'll also look at is the open open interest on the futures market um not something we really well we did touch on it the gold producers right they don't they aren't selling their contracts so if they're not selling their contracts that means there's less open interest less contracts trading in the market for a certain month but we need to look at what months have high open interest or low open interest because you could see volatility spike or decrease during these months um, you know, the, the less the the less the less volume is is going to have more volatility. It's just natural. It's just it's just a natural way to the market. You want the volume. You want you want this volume. Everybody, all these exchanges want volume. That's why there's this argument over uh, high frequency trading. That high frequency trading is making a lot of money, but they're also adding uh, liquidity to the market. So. We need to look at things like this. So we look at the duration of the options available. That means like how many options, what types of options are available 30 days from now, 60 days, 90 days. What's going on with them? We're looking at the ETF options. And when, when we like to look at, we like to um, invest in the COMEX options, right? The commodities exchange against the futures market, which we write uh, warrants against the gold. But this is something you need to look at, and it come, becomes a factor when expiries happen. All in all, we determine the strategy based on a lot of these above characteristics. There's a lot to look at, and I could go into, there's a lot of depth. And the point of this webinar is just to understand that this market exists, and you can utilize your gold holdings that will have always retain its value for that. So. We find our target duration and we will sell a call based on where we believe that gold will be at that time or at least under. It could be OTM means out of the money, which means much higher, or it could be, we could be close. Any, any option price or a strike or price is, is in play, not robotic. Right? So, all in all, we seek a mix of the price appreciation and income from the premiums. That's what you want to look for. So in final, I'm just going to let you know a little bit about our company and what we do, and, and then we'll close off. So Neptune, uh, we're a full service metals dealer. We work with individuals, wealth managers, family offices, institutional investors to provide a physical metal um, investment solutions, um, always around the physical metal market. Uh, it, it could be from your, your uh, gold eagles, maples, it could be larger bars, of, you name it. We actually, we're one of the oldest uh, gold companies that are still around doing this. Uh, we're established in 2002 uh, with a strong record of success. Uh, we've had zero zero complaints or anything to any um services and our first gold trade was 289 dollars <laughs> which you know puts in the perspective you know what where, where the gold price has gone since then so along with physical precious metals we do have innovative products that are that provide a much more um 
um, tradable and with risk and and price um, discovery uh, for for clients for transparency and liquidity, which we'll talk about a little in a little bit. Um, our association of partnerships. I don't know one other gold dealer that can name this many associations and partnerships. We have a partnership with Fiduciary Trust International, which is a, a subsidiary of Franklin Templeton, one of the largest asset managers in the world. We're a member of the DTCC. Um, we work with NYMEX, COMEX approved facilities. Those are commodities exchange, mercantile exchange, deliverable physical metal facilities, and many other institutional level auditors and administrators. And on our final slide, our services and products so you can understand. So we do physical precious metals acquisition and trading, right? We do a two-way market, like in our, our partnership with Canva Plan, when clients want to put metal into their IRA, we will we will supply that metal. We will also buy back that metal. The client is always rest assured that they have um, they have a way to in and a way out. Our custodial services are threefold. So you can use Camera Plan uh, for your IRA with custodial services. We have private storage with Neptune Global that we have uh, many clients that are storing privately in our in our NYMEX vault in Delaware. And you can also have an account with one of our partners, Fiduciary Trust International, which is a $92 billion um, asset manager um, in 100 years old that works with family offices and various other um, large institutions. Finally, we do have innovative and patent investment products. And this is something I can go into detail with everybody individually, but we have specialized products for you to buy and sell gold and silver and platinum and palladium that provide a better risk adjusted return, um, gives you a, a direct holding in the vault with a, at a better price than buying that specific product. And we have some accredited solutions that if you're an accredited investor, you can reach out and ask about those. So Joe, that's, uh, I'm done. This is my contact details. Good stuff, Brandon. And, um, yeah, the market update is something that Neptune Global and Brandon does uh, almost on a quarterly or twice a year basis for us. So you want to look in your, uh, you'll get it, receive an email for upcoming events and you'll want to attend those because they're always interesting. Um, I have a few questions here. Uh, I'm going to just read this one to make sure that um, you understand it completely. When you talk about premiums, can you describe what those are in terms of dollar value? What are you collecting? And uh, anonymous attendee, I hope I got that question right. Uh, sure. Um, well, so premiums are always live traded um, throughout the day at different levels. For for example, I'm just making these numbers up, but this is what we we would see. So let's say we had just twenty two thousand dollar gold, just to make it very simple. Now, in the market, a call for $2,100. So somebody can buy this contract to call that ounce of gold away from me um, at $2,100. That means they pay me $2,100. So right now, gold is $2,000. So that contract right now is worth nothing. Sorry, it does. If you executed it, you would... you. I'd be, I, I, yeah, it's great. I get to sell it for 2100 but I can buy it right now if I don't own it for 2000 That makes no sense. But that contract expires in 60 days. There's con there's contracts, there's so many contracts in different levels. There's 2000, 2010, 2020, 2000. There's all these. So that 2100 that could, that contract right now could be trading for, I could sell it to you for $20. It's going to cost you twenty dollars. I'm keeping twenty dollars, and if if gold is not twenty one hundred in sixty days, I keep the twenty dollars. Well, you don't act on it if it's below. You don't. You won't act on it. If if gold is twenty two hundred, that means you can say, "Give me the gold. I sell it to you for twenty one hundred. You paid twenty one hundred minus twenty, and you could go and sell for twenty two hundred right now." So 
you will see the premium at 2100 at 20 bucks. Then maybe that same expire at 60 days at 2150 would be $10 premium because it's still, it's so far out there. It's going to cost a little bit less, but, and people will buy these and people will sell them. So there's thousands of these contracts that are, available throughout throughout the day every single trading day at at all these different price points of gold and all these different expiries in the future that's a very high level about how the price works in an option um, but it's live traded just like the stock market just like apple is up and down every day based on what people perceive the value is by supply and demand in the stock just like gold is up and down every day like supply and demand small technical factors, people, the premiums are going to get pushed up and down. The premium could go up without gold going anywhere because maybe the demand for that one contract is high. So this is a free market. I hope that answered the question directly. So. Actually, I, I think it kind of did, but but Anonymous has, has chimed in with a subsequent question. What if you don't want the gold to be called away? How would you hedge in your example? Um, so if you don't want the coal... Um, so if you're, I mean, if you're, if you're the seller, do you believe he's talking about the seller or the buyer? I don't know. I think, this is well, if you don't want to be gold to call the way as the seller, yeah. I mean, you own the gold. You don't want to sell. You don't want to sell this without owning the gold. That's called a naked. <laughs> Almost, it's, right? it's like, it's, it's a naked sell, right? So you don't want to own it. So you're going to own the gold um, and they're going to sell it for, and you're going to sell it for 2,100. At least, you know. That you're gonna get twenty one hundred for your gold. It may be higher at some point when it gets called away, and then you have to sell it for that amount. So at that point, you may be down a little bit in theoretical value because the gold is 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 a little bit higher at that point. But you always know what you're gonna get, and so quite often people will sell options because they because they just know they want that price at some time in the future. I just, it, no matter what, I, I, I'm i happy selling at that price, no matter what. But if I get some premium and it's not there, that's okay. That's fine. So um, you want to hold your metal. I mean, you want to you want to have the metal for sure. I hope that answered the question, but we can. I hope so too. You know, this is yeah, a great, can... this is a great reason to get in touch with Brandon Anonymous uh, and, and get a conversation going with him. I have some great discussions with him on the phone when I talk to him, uh, not just about doing webinars, but about the market in general. And, and one of the questions I ask him uh, and, and two other people here have asked Matt and Sarah, they want to know why this is really an asset question, not so much in making money off a gold question is why isn't the price higher? I mean, I, I've got one of these little, well, when the question came in, I had one of these little clever inflation calculators on my phone. And I plugged in 1980, 850, which I think was the top, near the top there. And uh, I checked it, and it's really about 3200 bucks. And I've always wondered, given, right. central bank, inflation. given oh, yeah. you know, fiscal profligacy going on uh, all over the, the world and inflation and, and you know, and mm -hmm. geopolitical difficulties, why that price hasn't spiked and gone higher. Well, a lot of people, I wish I knew the exact answer. And there's a lot of people out there that would can give you different answers in different ways. I mean, yes. And even the silver inflation adjusted high of $142, I believe it is since 1980, right? When it was $50, it's hit $50 twice. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of factors for reasons it, it, it can't be higher, but the gold is, it's at its, re it's, it's hitting all time highs. Right, at least in in current value. Um, the, I mean, gold is going to go in and out of favor in, in different ways. Um, but it's I just I there's no reason why I couldn't say it. It, sh it should be higher, but it's making it's it's making its way. It's busting through. It's it's different sizes and inflation adjusted is also. You it depends on which which inflation numbers you're looking at too. Right? Yeah, and, so, and just because yeah. it hasn't just because it hasn't tracked 1980, uh, you know, yeah. doesn't mean the case is any different for gold than it was back then. So, and it could get there. I mean, it just it just means that there's a strong case for it to get to the inflation adjusted high, it, right? It's a strong case to get there. Um, one final, uh, just revisiting the idea of gold shares. Uh, 
a lot of investors hold mining <clears> shares. <throat> it's often a proxy because it's a highly cyclical market, as many raw, raw materials markets are. Um, the price goes down, investment dries up, then demand begins to pick up, and there's a long <clears throat> cycle between putting money into things that can get stuff out of the ground and getting yeah. stuff out of the ground. So just put that put gold shares into perspective. I mean, how, does, how do they play in here? I know it's a security. It's not physical gold. Sure. But, you know, definitely some well, interplay. Something that the main, one of the main um, fundamentals that gold shares are, they're priced and traded on is, is their, is their spread, right? You know, cost of gold out of the ground or all in sustaining costs, it's called, right? The AISC. And then what is the current price of gold, right? So all these miners, they all have different all, all in sustaining costs because their properties might be hard. Some properties might be diff more difficult and more, more like easy. Yeah, like oil and gas. yeah. So you'll see that it, the the actual, the price of the shares, um, depending on if they're a high cost producer or a low cost producer will amplify more as the gold price moves. So often I've, I've had people that, that always, I've, I've, um, one of my uh, old chairman, Eric Sprott, he used to look for high high cost producers. Like, why would you look for high cost producers? Like, it's beca because they'd be depressed more because of the gold price. If it goes down, if they're close, that means the share price gets. But if they if gold flips up, those have the higher. Those are the ones that are going to go up faster. They're it's just more risky. Right. It's more risk. It's 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 your risk analysis of how you're going to do that. But some people, they look for these producers. Right. I mean, they are going to follow gold a little bit. They're they're generally going to follow gold, but it's going to be amplified like a like a margin account based on their all in sustaining costs. And and quite frankly, if, the, if every any one of these can go bankrupt like any other company. Sure. Right. They absolutely can. Right. So it's it's. It's something to be mindful of. They may they, they may have gold in the ground, possibly, but they can lie about it. Yeah. Everybody remember. Uh, I, I mean, I remember Brex and different things like that. But they can lie about it. They can spend all the money that the investors invested. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm not trying to be a doom and gloom, right? But it's a different. These, yeah. It's a different asset, and it's going to trade in a different way, and it's going to come with different risks. Um, for sure. Good, good. And then right. one final question, because I think we're headed towards the top of the hour. Yeah. Uh, and I think anonymous, I, I think it's the same anonymous as return. Besides generating income selling options, are there ways to protect on the downside? Well, selling options are the income, right? That we we're discussing as, as he mentioned, as they mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um the protecting the downside of gold is buying the put options. So you can sell. So if you want the, and that's not income, that's buying. Mm -hmm. So if you were to buy the put option on the downside at gold is $2,000 and you said, you know what, if it goes below 1900, I want to be protected. And what am I willing to pay for that? Right. So that option that night, that 2100 option was $20. I said the call. But if you want to protect the downside, you're buying a put. That means I'm buying the option to put the gold in your hands for X price for $1,900. So if this option is 20 bucks in 60 days from now, I pay $20 for this $1,900 put. If gold got slammed $1,800. I can put it, uh, you have to sell it to me for 19. Um, sorry, I have I have to sell, sell it. No, sorry. <laughs> I can sell it to you for 19. I can put it in your hands for $1,900, right? So gold is 1,800. I have the option to put it in your hands and you have to sell it to me for nine. I have to, I can sell it to you for 1,900. So therefore it's 1,800. I can sell it for 1,900. Hmm. Or that contract is worth $100. Because gold is eighteen hundred, and the contract is nineteen hundred. Theoretically, that contract is worth a hundred dollars. So you made five times your money on the contract. Whatever you want to do, right? So you could sell the contract for for eighty dollars more, or you can just put the gold in somebody else's hand for nineteen hundred dollars. 
that would be protecting yourself from the downside. Now, selling these calls also lowers your 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 co your your cost, right? So if you have a two thousand dollar say say two thousand you bought gold at two thousand, your cost is two thousand, and you sold a call for twenty dollars in sixty days, it expires worthless. Well, your cost there you have twenty dollars extra in your account, so your cost now is down twenty dollars, and you do it again and again and again, and let's say you do that four times, theoretically, you're now at $1,900. So you've protected some downside, right? So you can maybe buy smaller puts on the downside. There's a lot of variables and a lot of ways to look at these options. And you can, if you know what you're doing, you can, you can, you can do it right and protect yourself. Interesting. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate the, uh, yeah. the answer there. And anonymous. Okay. Hope we answered your questions. And, and again, I suggest you guys get in touch. Um, I think, Brandon's had his uh, comp his contact information there. If you want to contact us, we'll put you in touch with him. Uh, but that'd be a great conversation to continue. I, Brandon, I want to thank you for your time and for the information you brought to us. Uh, it, it's a great help understanding how these things work. Uh, and thanks to our audience too, who show up and and uh, and participate in the middle of the day and 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 sometimes when we send the replay out, they watch. And uh, thanks mm -hmm. also uh, for your attendance as well. Uh, All right. We'll have another one next week. Um, feel free to, uh, to, uh, visit the website to find out what we'll be covering then. Anyway, thanks again, Brandon. Take care of yourself and you and I will talk. Thank soon. you all. All right. Thanks, okay. Everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.